Today I'm going to show you three easy ways to grill the perfect steak right here on Texas 2.5 Barbecue. Let's get started. What's left to do is to season and enjoy these babies. Here we go. Kosher salt. All of them are going to get a little bit of kosher salt. I haven't put any seasonings on these yet. If you like, you can salt these a few hours ahead to sort of dry brine. Give them a good coat on both sides. You don't have to go too heavy with the salt because uh, we are going to season these some of these further. Black pepper. I'm using the restaurant style coarse grind. Two of these are going to get some of our Outlaw Surf and Turf seasoning from Bootleg Spice Company. To give it that nice Montreal style finishing crust. And then finally, one of these is going to get some of our secret surprise umami powder. I'm going to set it all the way over here to season it because I don't want to affect any of these other three. All right, it's time to cook. All right, here's our first steak for our traditional salt and pepper we're going with a traditional sear. I'm gonna sear it hot and fast. Burn my fingers on that. I don't have my white cotton glove on underneath. Anyhow, we're gonna sear hot and fast and uh, finish it on indirect. The one that we added our bootleg spice outlaw surf and turf seasoning to, we're gonna start over here on indirect. And you're gonna see two really nicely seared steaks here that I'll explain in a minute. For the time being, let's focus on this uh, salt and pepper guy that's getting a nice flame roasted sear on him. We'll probably do about a minute on all four sides. A minute in and we have some awesome color on this traditionally seared steak. Wow. You can still see some of the bubbling. All right, our traditional seared salt and pepper steak. The sear looks awesome. It's at about 100 degrees, so it has 25 degrees left to go over here on the indirect side. Our reverse seared, which that just means, again, we started out with this one on the cold side, brought it up to about 80 degrees, 90 degrees, and now we're searing it off. I would normally wait till around 115 or so, uh, but this one's getting close to 100 degrees and it's a much smaller steak than I would normally be searing. So I don't want the sear um, to push us past 130 too far. Additionally, I'm searing four sides of this instead of just two, which you would be doing with a big flat steak. So uh, I'm searing it a little early. Again, it's about 80 or 85 degrees. This sear on all four sides should bring us up to, again, hopefully around the 130 range. We'll see what happens. Getting a little low on charcoal, so I'm not getting as much flameage as I was on the first four steaks. But uh, hopefully when some more of that grease drips down there, we'll start getting some better flames. But in spite of the lack of flames, it is still stinking hot over that lump charcoal. Check this out. That's the quality of sear and bubbling I'm getting before that flame even jumped up there. So we're still getting a great sear 
and uh, it looks comparable already to our traditional sear that we did a few minutes ago. All right, here's the technique I'm really excited about trying. Right here down in the bottom center, well, it's, it's your left, it's bottom to me, uh, it tells me we're at about 575, 580. That's where I'm gonna start this steak because I don't wanna be in a zone that's over 600 degrees for my first time trying this. We're just gonna use one of our salt and black pepper steaks to test this searing out and see how it goes. Sounds awesome so far. All right, it's been about one minute. Let's see what kind of a sear we got on that first side. We, get, we definitely got crust in the brown areas. Obviously, we didn't have good contact across all of it, but in the places we did get good contact, man, that looks like diner quality uh, hash browns or something. Let's try to get better contact on this side. One minute, let's go. All right, let's see how this final side does. All right, let's check this side. Oh, baby. Got a little bit better sear on that side. Remember the first side, we were missing a couple spots. This side, awesome brown sear. Let's try it uh, on the back side, or on the top side. See if we can get it to flatten out a little bit. These aren't gonna take long at all because they're so small. We're down to, you know, about six to eight ounces on each one of these steaks. But they are gonna taste good, I'll tell you that. Before we flip this to the fourth side, just look and listen. All right, those tops and bottoms didn't get nearly as good of a sear, but remember it was kind of arched and it was hard to get it all the way down there on the griddle the whole time. We're gonna set it off to the side, take an internal temp in a minute, but I've decided to go ahead and do our umami steak the same way. It already smells better. I'm gonna be, I, I'm blown away. Actually, the smell is already amazingly more savory coming off of that umami steak. I can't wait to taste this baby. Minute on each side. Now I'm using a quarter inch steel plate from my Lone Star Grill smoker. The nice thing about using such a heavy piece of steel, this thing's probably 30 or 40 pounds. Um, once you get this baby to 600 degrees, you can put a quite a bit of cold meat on there, flip it over as much as you want, and it's really not going to kill your temps very much at all. Really nice. Getting good crust on this one with that uh, umami, the bootleg spices on there. Uh, some of it did come off and stick to the grill on me, but that's to be expected when you're using big coarse grind seasonings. Let me flip it over to our fourth side and then uh, finish these babies on indirect. Time for the payoff. All right, guys, we have our Traditional salt and pepper seared dry aged New York strip. We have our everything reverse seared New York strip. We have our plain salt and pepper surprise griddle steak at 600 degrees. And we have our everything uh, plus umami uh, griddle seared 600 degree New York strip steak. Remember this one had umami and the outlaw Surf and Turf, this one just had the Outlaw Surf and Turf. So these were our two main steaks that we were trying to show off today. The griddle steaks were a bonus and a surprise just to see how that 600 degree carbon steel quarter inch plate would do. But honestly, you can find yourself a quarter inch steel plate. Uh, get yourself a welder buddy or a metal fab worker and you might be able to pick that up even cheaper than a piece of cast iron. And frankly, I think it works better. Anyhow, let's give these a taste. Here we go. Let's try this traditional seared salt and pepper steak first off. Nice little bit of pink there. I prefer my steak a little bit more rare, but it's so hard when you're working with a six to an eight ounce piece of meat 
and uh, you're trying to get a good sear on all four sides. Anyhow, with the dry aging, this should be good. Another reason I want to do this is it's been so long since I've done a traditionally seared steak. These days, reverse sear is all the rage, uh, and it's delicious, but everybody does reverse sear all the time, and it's been forever since I've just thrown a steak on the hot side of the grill, seared it up, and finished it on the indirect side, and done it in that order. So, uh, so let's check out nothing but salt and pepper, dry aged New York strip. Tender as all get out. Hmm. There's crust. There's crunch. There's no rubs or spices taking over. I love the simplicity of salt and pepper. And for years, I was a salt and pepper only guy on steaks. Um, I know a lot of you are still like that. No problem with that. It's a great way to eat a steak. Lately, I've really preferred putting a lot on my beef just to kick it up a notch. But salt and pepper is all we ever did growing up. My dad would take me out on hunting trips. We would bring steaks with us. He always tried to make hunting trips fun and brought really good supplies. And we would do steaks over the campfire. Salt and pepper, wrap some potatoes in tin foil, throw them in the coals. Really simple but amazing, delicious dinners out in the woods in Alaska. And uh, that was awesome stuff. Let's give our reverse seared, not only with salt and pepper on it, but also with the Outlaw Surf and Turf from bootlegmeats.com. Here we go. Immediately I've got a crunch. Those big coarse spices from Bootleg blacken up nicely. If you like blackened seasonings, then use the big coarse grind spices like that and put them over high heat. Now you can keep them from blackening if you just cook indirect the whole time. But I like that blackened. Uh, I know that's a Cajun thing. I've never had the experience of <clears throat> lots of Cajun cooking, but I think they have that right for sure. The only difference I notice there is just more complexity. Exactly what I would expect. Tastes a little bit saltier. Tastes a little bit... Um, tastes like it has rub on it. It tastes like it has barbecue rub on it. That's that's exactly how I prefer to do my prime ribs, my New York strips, my ribeyes, whatever. Again, salt and pepper is great and I love it and I would eat it like that all day long. But for me, uh, adding a little more complex steak rubs and uh, finishing rubs to beef kicks it up a notch. Let's try our traditional griddle steak. This one just had salt and pepper on it. This was cooked on a 600 degree steel griddle. Of the four, this one got the most done. It barely has any pink in the middle, so that's more of a medium. Let's see how it came out. Hmm. Not crunchy. I was expecting a little bit more of a crunch, especially when it looked like hash browns when we were first cooking it. Um, and it's possible that it softened up. The two griddle steaks, I actually cooked them first even though I showed them last. I wanted to cook them when my grill was at its hottest, when that steel plate was at its hottest. And they may have softened a bit while they were cooling. Still delicious, great beef flavor with just plain old salt and pepper on it. But uh, I was hoping for a little more crust on that, a little more crunch. Still great. Just not sure it's worth breaking out a 30 to 40 pound implement <laughs> to cook it that way. But before we make a final judgment, let's try this last one. This was our griddle steak with umami, with bootleg, with salt and pepper, cooked super hot on that steel plate. And that is a beautiful pink color that we got. Let's see if this black crust gives us any crunch on this bite. The answer is yes. Using that coarse grind uh, Outlaw Surf and Turf definitely gives the steak a better chance to crust up. So if you like that crunchy texture on your steaks, it's not like, okay, when I say crunchy, I'm using the word loosely. It's not like you're eating cornflakes with no milk in it. It's not that kind of crunchy, but it's crunchy in terms of what you would expect from eating a steak. You don't expect a steak to have crunch to it. When you add the, the coarser grind seasonings like Montreal style seasonings, 
uh, bootleg being my favorite, um, it gives it that, that what I think takes it to another level and turns a steak from an A to an A+. As far as the umami on that one, it's not super strong, it's not a huge difference from the others. There is something that's a little bit deeper, a little bit additional. I think that mushroomy flavor does kick it up a notch. What I need to do next is just do a steak with umami on it versus a steak with salt and pepper and see what that tastes like, just to, just to get an idea for what the umami is doing in the background. But both my wife and I agreed there is something a little bit better about that fourth steak. There is something going on there with the umami that makes it a little bit beefier, a little bit richer. It's not a huge thing, it's not gonna blow your mind. But uh, I think all in all, it is a little bit better with that umami on there. Now I have a surprise for you. You remember that ugly, gross looking, dead skin looking pellicle it's called that I cut off when I was trimming up that New York strip roast? That very first huge slice I took from the outside was cutting off the pellicle or that dry aged area. I decided to throw that thing on the grill and just see what it would taste like. I don't think that you that people trim those off because they are dangerous to eat, even though, you know, bacteria has been working on your dry aged meat. I think it's safe to eat. It's just most people think it's not tasty. I want to taste one. I didn't season it at all. <laughs> okay. Confirmed. Not worth eating. It has a... It's not a gamey taste, but it's like an unpleasant... It's not super strong. Like, it's not gross. Like, like uh, I want to spit it out in the trash can. But it is like an unpleasant level of gaminess, aged kind of a flavor. Um, it doesn't have a pleasant, like, blue cheese kind of a thing. It just tastes like old meat. Uh, old shoe leather. Let's throw that away. Anyhow, thank you for watching our simple, easy ways to cook a steak. I hope you enjoyed it. You can do this cheap. You can do this easy. You don't have to have uh, fancy equipment. You can do this on a cheapo Walmart gas grill, a bottom of the line Weber, less than a hundred bucks for a Weber grill. You can do like me and get a nicer Weber grill, but buy it on Facebook and still get it for less than a hundred bucks. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get set up for under a hundred dollars for awesome grilling. I prefer the charcoal flavor and the wood flavor. I understand not everybody can have a grill uh, in an apartment or, you know, certain situations, but uh, if you can, if you're allowed to have a grill, you can get set up for cheap and uh, it's an awesome way to cook a steak over live flame. If you want to go the salt and pepper route, or if you want to go a little bit more complex like I did on a couple of these, awesome way to eat beef. I hope you'll try it if you haven't. If you're already a steak guy and you're just watching this for a refresher, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Leave me some comments down below on your favorite way to cook a steak. We'll see you next time on Texas 2.5. Smoke on y'all. Hmm. I'm thinking about eating this plate. I can't stop eating those steaks. Those steaks were killer. There is not a one of those four steaks that was a dog. So the bottom line is, any of those ways you cook a steak, it's gonna be delicious. Give it a whirl. Man, that was good. I'm going back to eat some more.